Hello there, my name is Josh. Welcome to Eva Trades. Enjoy the show. Let's go. Hourly and 15 minute time frames on since there's so many candles on the five minute time frame, I'm going to go ahead and use the 15 minute to mark out some supports here. And it looks like we're stair stepping down, stair stepping down. We have possible, um, let me go back to the five minute here and see if this is what I'm thinking it might be. Got to keep an eye on the time. It's kind of looking like a falling wedge, doesn't it? Whoop, that didn't connect very well. Doesn't that look like a falling wedge? So we'll see. Maybe, and if I go back up to that larger time frame again, we had almost this cup and handle pattern that didn't quite take off. So some big resistance up there at 283. We'll be watching that for sure. Let's move on to the next stock. We, the, the clock is a ticking. Got a nice big old pivot right here. And you can see we broke out and came back and back tested that pivot already. Nice back test. Support right here. Choppy action here. This could be a very choppy day. I would not be surprised. I don't think I'll be taking a trade right out the gate. I'm going to want to see which stock is going to make its move. And then I can switch you over here. Oh. My microphone is doing some weird stuff there. Something like that. Let's get back up to the top. Okay, 628 and 51 seconds. So we've got a minute to go before the bell. I'm going to set up my stop parameters. Wow, really small stop parameters here, right around five cents. So thank you for joining me this morning and uh, hopefully we'll get to learn a few things and do a few things and make a little bit of money. That's why we're that's why we're here, right? Make a little money. I'm just setting my stop parameters here on all of these so that I'll be ready to take a trade should the opportunity present itself. And when I say stop parameters, I'm talking about setting my stop loss. How far below my entry do I want my stop loss to be when I get into a trade? I always have a stop loss. I never trade without one. So the market is open. I didn't mark this support, but we kind of already broke through that, but that, that is a nice support. Maybe if we hold that, there could be a trade there. 1071 is that pivot. Remember we back tested that already. Not sure if that will be strong still. Holding support here at the moment on PDSB. We've got 10 seconds to go till that one minute candle closes. I would almost want to take an entry here on this one. I'm not a hundred percent, but I could take a starter and we'll see what happens. Now I don't like to hold these in the first few minutes, so I'm going to be looking for some quick profits. Okay, 
So I made a quick $30 there and I'm buying over here on IMMX. I missed the entry that I wanted on it. I'm buying off of that pink line and I'm going to sell half right there and then I'm going to sell the rest. So there's $60 there. So if you take a look, if you can see that I'm at $60 on IMMX and PDSB I've got 30. So I'm building a cushion on the day. I like to take small, small, quick trades, build a cushion and then look for that one trade that I can get into that I could hold and afford to take a hundred dollar loss. And I'm in a trade over here on RDBX and I, it happened so quick I was not able to switch over to show you but I can show you right now um, I got in RDBX I don't even know can you see that RDBX yeah I got in RDBX when the candle was down here it was right at the VWAP and then I sold as it broke up through there and if I zoom down here, you can see my profit. I don't know if you can see how much I made there, but that's $60 on that one. Kind of a hokey setup I have here, but uh, hey, it's, it's better than taking screenshots. So that's what I had been doing. All right. So I was thinking of taking a trade here on PDSB when this candle was green, and I'm now glad that I didn't. And how badly how badly do I wish that I would have held this trade down here that I took look at that look at that going up maybe gonna hit that pink line up there that's that's these falling wedges for you know you know they are a powerful powerful pattern they don't always work and that's kind of why I sold early like I said wanting to build that cushion And now I'm going to just kind of look around and see where is my next trade going to be. I'm up $150. There's a nice break above the VWAP right there. What time is it? A new one minute candle there. And I might have, I might have jumped the gun on that. I'm going to go ahead and sell that for a $55 profit on RPTX. So I bought that on that pullback to the VWAP and then sold as it broke out over this candle right here. So what we had there was some nice strength, a big push up, that candle closed. Getting in on that pullback, you got the support of the VWAP, the EMAs, and then selling as it breaks out over that candle. Now here's another such scenario is not quite as powerful. This could be a buying opportunity here I'm up about $200 on the day and I think I'm probably about done for the day. But let's take a look and we'll just kind of watch things a little bit and see uh, what happens. Um, I want to see if this one actually hits that pink line. It looks like there it is. There it is. So had you gotten in down here, let's take a look at that. My, my stop parameters and stuff. I got in right down there. I put a green line where I got in. That was my entry down there and you can see I'm, I'm gonna make this a little bigger so we can kind of take a look here when I got in you weren't able to see the green line because I hit the market buy button and so that green line does not stay there right now this is a limit order and that's why you're seeing that green line that's a limit order to buy at that price at 239 and then my stop loss is automatically put in down here and my target is up here so I would have certainly hit my $200 mark right there that would have been really nice huh how about that so now do we break out above that do we break above um, what's what's our resistance points here I'm gonna actually cancel this before I end up getting filled on a trade I don't want to get filled on 272 is resistance right there um yeah yeah so we got a little bit of momentum happening here 
Oh, this doesn't look like a real wick. I don't, I don't know if anybody was watching, but I don't know that that actually jumped up there like that. Maybe it did. Maybe it did. Look at IMMX continuing to climb. And if we look at IMMX on the hourly time frame right here, it, it was kind of a cup and handle pattern on the 15 and, and maybe even here. Well, let me see. Actually, I'd rather look at it on the 15. That's not the same stock. Let's get over to the correct one. Here we go. So you, you see how you've kind of got a really sloppy, you know, almost looks like an inverted head and shoulders, but an inverted head and shoulders always comes at the bottom of a downtrend. This is not really the bottom of a downtrend. Well, it is on the hourly, but this is, this is not a, you've got this big move up. So, um, let me get back to what I was talking about here. So if you want to picture a cup and handle setup, and this is not really the ideal cup and handle setup, but you could, you could say it's one. It's, it's where, let's see, I, I don't have a drawing tool where I can just draw. Wait, maybe I do. Let's see if I do. So if you had, if you picture this being the cup, I guess I do have one of these. And okay, so there's the cup. And then this would be the handle my <laughs> drawing is terrible and then it would break out over this line it didn't do that and it took it a while to actually get there so you could still say maybe cup and handle pattern i i don't know if you can call it that still but the psychology of it of the pattern is still there you know where the the bulls push the price up to this level bears push it back down bulls push it back up to form this double top and then bears push back again and then the bulls come up with some real nice steam look at this volume bulls come up with some really strong volume and just shove right through that level that's what you want forgive my drawings there <laughs> they leave something to be desired but hey this isn't an art class so uh yeah so what do we have? So I, I didn't even look at SPRB. I have it up over here. Oh, shoot. I have to apologize. This whole time I've had it on the wrong chart. Oh my gosh. Ah. I'm gonna have to do something about that because I keep d making that same mistake. So I just went through this whole thing about a cup and handle. Well, maybe on the second attempt, I could draw it better. Okay, let's take a look. Here's what I was saying. Um, I was saying that you have this resistance across the top right here, right? And so you've got this cup, right? And then you've got the handle. And the idea is that the handle is supposed to break out. Bulls make the move up to this resist and, 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 the, and the bears start buying here so that you get this uh, resistance the bears push the price back down bulls come back up to that same area bears push the price back down but not as far this time and the bulls come in with some serious volume and blast right through now here's some serious volume this has been pulling back a little more than what a cup and handle should it's still the psychology is there you you could almost say and and i would only want to do this if this was a downtrend but um it, it has that look of a head and shoulders you know like that an inverted head and shoulders you got your shoulder you got your head and now your other shoulder it, it's it's really not ideal because it should be you would really want to see that normally at the bottom of a downtrend and it is the bottom of a downtrend but we have already made a move up so i don't know <laughs> you know it's not perfect i guess the market's not perfect patterns are not perfect but um and and another thing the reason that I probably wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't be quite as interested in this is because it's pulled back far enough that by the time it gets up to this um, resistance level, it's already really extended, right? So I wouldn't expect to break through and a surge right through there and it continuing to climb because you need to really see a pullback. So what I'd want to see is to have this kind of pullback now, you know, and consolidate and then slowly make the move up towards that resistance before blasting through it. If it just goes straight up and blasts through it, eh, it's probably gonna fail and come back down pretty hard, maybe, you know. 
We could watch it and see if that's what happens. Boy, uh, B RPTX making a nice move through that resistance level. Not too bad. Not too bad. You can tell I've kind of stopped trading. Let me see. Let's get down to the... Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I was... Yeah. So, some opportunity today. Some good opportunity. But I'm up 60 on IMMX. Uh, let's, oh, let me take a look here. Instead of trying to add all that up, I'm up 145 here, $60 over on the other computers. So that's over $200, and I'm happy with that. Just trying to think of what else I can do here so that we can make the most out of this. So we, we covered a, uh, a um, falling wedge. We covered a cup and handle, kind of an inverted head and shoulders. And okay, it's 6:42, so we have a pullback here now, uh, hitting that resistance, pulling back now, consolidating. This is kind of what I wanted to see. A, a good entry spot right here off of that pink line. But do we consolidate more on the five minute? That is the question. Is this candle going to close with a long upper wick? It's only halfway through, so a lot can happen. If I'm not careful, I'm going to talk myself into taking another trade here. I really want to get in here. But I'm going to be disciplined and say no. And I'm, and I'm not going to be sad if it goes up without me. I'm not, I'm not shooting for a whole lot. My risk, my risk per trade is $100 and I don't, I don't often let myself take that full loss. My stop loss is in place in case there's a drop and um, it'll take me out of the trade without me taking a huge loss. But typically if a trade's not working, I exit long before it ever hits my stop loss. But right now I'm only risking $100 per trade and if I'm making $200, that's pretty good. I mean, I'm that's about what I shoot for on an average daily you know daily daily gains so I'm happy with that but let's let's watch this a little bit longer could enter right there on IMMX off of that volume weighted average price uh, PDSB making a nice little move here you see you see where it's consolidating below the VWAP would almost want to buy this for the breakout and there it goes can PDSB get over the highs of today so a nice declining volume on the way down that is what you want You want declining volume on the way down because that means you're running out of you're running out of bears. There aren't as many people shorting the stock. There aren't as many people selling the stock. And the bulls come in with some nice volume and start to win. So you have another opportunity here. If you missed it here, you could jump in here and see if you get continuation. PDSB and same kind of opportunity back testing the volume weighted average price and the EMAs boy I really want to punch the buy button there <laughs> I can see where I would have done pretty well had I kept trading I was gonna I wanted to get in here I wanted to get in over here and yeah is this a downtrend that's that's yeah, kind of a short-term downtrend so coming up to that resistance now, I'm wondering if we if we get rejected off of 440 and we do that thing that we were looking at earlier, you know, where you kind of get this cup and handle. I wonder. 
Isn't this fun just to sit and watch and see if these patterns actually do what you think they might do or if they, if they start to form. And over here we could have, um, we could have the classic, you know, boom, 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 you know, kind of thing. And they, they really boom. They like to boom a lot, you know, classic bull pennant right there. There's an entry spot right there. If anybody wanted to take that, you could get in and hopefully that would hold, you know, looking for a move up through the highs. I can get rid of that line. Boy, I really want to take this trade like so bad. Oh, look at this drop over here. This one here breaking out through the highs did not get that cup, that cup and handle pattern. It just broke straight through. Red candle here now. Maybe it pulls back to the VWAP. 647. That's an inside bar on the five minute time frame. Not surprised. Other stocks, uh, all the other stocks are now starting to pull back as well. You could buy this back test here off of this important resistance as a double top that we broke through now back testing. But with everything else pulling back now, I kind of wonder if you'd want to wait a little bit. Here's another entry opportunity right there. If I take that entry opportunity, will I get stopped out? I don't like the red candle. I actually got myself into a trade here looking for something and not getting it right away and getting out because it's a break even trade. So <laughs> I didn't lose anything there. And I'm happy to exit. It didn't move right away like I wanted. I do like it. I I think um, my stop is pretty close there, but I do like that for a trade. I want to see the low of that candle hold. What time is it? So, um... I'm going to jump back out. So yeah, no more trades for me, but, uh, <laughs> and there, it, it looks like maybe it is going to work out after all. Uh, wow. Wow. There's a second chance to get in there. And, uh, R RDBX actually is making a pretty nice move too. So we got some nice, nice opportunities here that I'm, uh, I'm not really taking a full advantage of, but that's fine. I think I might have given back a little profit on IMMX. I think I was up 60 and I'm only up 40 now. Oh, RDBX just making a move. Look at this over here. See RDBX. And when this candle started to break out here, I thought, oh, that'd be a good place to get in. And then it just shot straight through that high right through the high of pre-market. Is that the high of pre-market? Yes, it is. Not too shabby. Bouncing here off of that volume weighted average price. And this, this uh, ABCD setup here kind of uh, choppy. Kind of choppy. You got a five minute candle here that closed red and you might see a, maybe a two bar pullback type of setup here. Yeah. Hey, how about we do this? Because I want to, I want to get out of here and uh, call it a day. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to pause that. Let's look at PNL is 125 here, 60 over there. So I'm up 185. So yeah, I gave back 20 bucks. So let's skip ahead. Let's skip ahead. 20 minutes and see what happened on the day. Okay. And okay. Did we ever see, um, was, okay. Over here is where I was trying to trade this. Was that it? Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, yeah. This is what I was looking for that ABCD setup. It never did break, never broke out. 
So really glad I didn't hold on to that trade. Bouncing off of the VWAP down here. Pretty nice, you know, off of that pullback. I remember this candle dropping and then it bounced around here for a while and finally broke out. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right, because this is the one... Where was... Actually, where was the one that... We were looking at earlier saying, oh, it was consolidating below the VWAP. Oh, that was right here. That was this. And you see this? Here's what I look at. So after this move down... And I'm looking at, it's, it's kind of another one of those patterns, you know, this move up. So you got this move down and then this, and then kind of like something like that. It didn't quite break. You'd want this candle to break over that candle. It didn't quite, but it has the look. So that, that's what I look for. And the bears really wanted this to break down. It did not. Instead, it put in this long upper wick because this is a bear pennant, but it didn't break to the downside and it started breaking up. And that's where I started to get interested, especially when it got up here towards the VWAP. I'm like, man, this looks like a good trade. And the second I said that, then it breaks out. And then this pullback right here, you know, you could have bought that. And I think I did call that out. So um, lots of good opportunity and then a nice move up through the highs. But, you know, of course, it's extended by the time it gets up here and then it spends more time pulling back. But then you have a level down here to buy back off of. And, you know, wow. So, so many, so many different places you can buy. Look at this bounce off of here. I wonder if that gets any follow through if I skip ahead 20 minutes. I love skipping ahead. So it doesn't really get a lot of follow through. Here's a breakout and a fake out. Anybody getting in here got stopped out on this big red candle going down. Ouch. Losing money there. Well, anyways, uh, thank you all for, I hope I was on the right charts. Yes, I was. <laughs> uh, okay. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you to, every, to everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it. And um, I hope that uh, your trading days go well. And we will talk to you next time up $180 on the day, getting that much closer to that $10,000 mark. Goodbye, everybody.